Okay, I am back in my usual noisy environment and I'm testing the microphone pickup of the Sony Ultra Wear headphones. This is the microphone pickup of the Sony Ultra Wear in 3, 2, and 1. And now this is the microphone pickup of the Sony Ultra Wear headphones. The quick bound box jumps over, the lazy dog. How do I sound? Let me know in the comments. Forget about extra bass, the outwear is like Sony taking the gloves off like Oh, you want more bass? Here! Enjoy! <laughs> it isn't like they can only be bassy though, in fact the outwear starts off as not sounding boomy or even bassy at all, but if you want that ultra bass experience, press this button and it gives you two levels of bing bang boom. Now, how does it sound like on default versus ultra bass, and how is this microphone pickup active noise cancelling or transparency. To find out, we're gonna listen to some sound samples and I'm gonna give you my virgin analysis of what I think of the Altwear. Another video is coming in which I'm gonna compare them to the XB910N and the flagship WH-1000XM5 noise cancelling headphones. So if you don't want to miss out on this video, get subscribed and tap the bell button to stay notified. First, we're going to talk about its build quality and specs. On the surface, it resembles the more premium WH-1000XM5, but with a few key differences. The out button, the speaker grille under the yoke arm that spans the width of the ear cup, possibly as a vent for a better excursion of its 40mm drivers, and this grille that looks similar to that of the WF-1000XM5 earbuds, which is for the microphones taking care of active noise cancelling or transparency. The outwear is also fully foldable, you can fold it this way, you can fold it into a smaller package, like so. The XM5 headphones, you can do that. The grade of plastics used in its construction does feel cheaper and not as premium as the WH-1000XM5 or even its predecessor, the XM4 headphones. It's kind of more similar to the XB910N, but as you can see, its construction is still able to hold up to this sort of abuse. What you are getting here in terms of specs is pretty basic as far as Sony headphones are concerned. It's got up to 30 hours of battery with ANC, it's got multi-point pairing so you can connect up to two devices to these headphones at the same time and switch between them for music and phone calls. They're not high-res wireless certified, and neither do they have DSEE Extreme, like premium Sony headphones, for the past four years. Instead, you get the basic version of DSEE, which is an engine that still does a decent enough job of patching detail in the high frequencies that otherwise would have been lost during Bluetooth transmission. This can be activated through the Sony Headphones Connect app, and it's got most of the same features and settings as the flagship models like adaptive sound control and find my equalizer. Controls are split between between both ear cups, touchpad on the right for volume and music controls, buttons on the left for ANC toggles, power slash pairing, and the bass spamming button over here. Right now, we're going to test its microphone quality in both quiet and noisy conditions using some really loud cafe noise and wind noise from this fan. I'm now making a phone call in a quiet place using the Sony Ultra Wear headphones. I'm now making a phone call in a noisy place using the Sony Ultra Wear headphones. A quick round box jumps over the next door. In quiet conditions, my voice sounds crisp and clean, but in noisy conditions, it does let in quite a bit of background noise. Spoiler alert, it seems very similar to the older XM4 headphones, so it's nowhere near as quiet as the current flagship XM5s in terms of cancelling background noise during phone calls. Also, side tone is automatically enabled, which passes through your own voice during a phone call, but that can be switched off in the Headphones Connect app. In terms of active noise cancelling, surprisingly, I find this to be very effective. For example, it is more effective than the XB910N across the board, about as quiet also as the XM5 headphones, and it's also quieter than its predecessor, the WH-1000XM4, which had more white noise masking 
over the mid-range, whereas this straight up cancels it. Although the XM4 headphones does seem to be more powerful than the Altware at cutting low frequency rumble. Have a listen to the samples. Now, if you want to compare their call quality and active noise cancelling to headphones from other brands, become a member for $1 per month or more. This gives you full access to my personal comparison tool, which you can use to compare headphones A to B at your own time and at your own pace. Hundreds of people have joined up, especially people who can't simply visit a store anytime to compare headphones. They are saving so much time being able to just cut through all the marketing and compare these products remotely without visiting a store. So become a member like them, click on the link below to find out more. In terms of transparency, I find it to be very natural sounding. Yes, it's got a bit of occlusion in the upper mids region, so my voice isn't amplified as much as the voice of the person in front of me, but I do find it very usable when, say, having a quick conversation with people or for general situational awareness. Very clean and clear transparency. It does also block sudden loud noises, but the noise has to be very loud to trigger that blocking. In terms of sound quality, obviously the whole point of the Altware is extremely loud boosted bass whenever you want it. That is the whole point of this product, to go very loud without losing bass loudness unlike most headphones. And there are two modes which can be toggled with the Alt button. On the default Alt Off mode, we're seeing some bass boost between 50Hz and above 60 to 150Hz, with a rather V-shaped tuning of the upper mids and highs. This somewhat preserves the crispness of the vocals as well as some brightness in the sound staging. At this point, Listening to the sound, there's not a lot of bass. Now, I did get some bass detail and punchiness, but not a lot of sub-bass gravity. So in terms of its overall tuning on its out-off setting, I feel it does lean a little more warm and mellow in the mid-range than what I prefer usually, but overall, it is still quite enjoyable to listen to. Sound staging is more on the compact side rather than open and spacious, which does intensify that energetic feeling when you're listening to bass-heavy tracks. Now, switching to the Alt-1 setting, we begin to see some bass boosting to the bass regions. A bit in the sub-bass, but more boosting in the mid-bass frequencies, which is going to add more punchiness, gravity, and impact. The rest of the tuning remains relatively untouched compared to out off, but at this point, even pensive sustained rumble tracks can be felt clearly, which wasn't that obvious before when out was off. On out 2 is when things start to go into overdrive. It's got extremely loud bass, around 10 decibels louder at certain points compared to out 1, and 15 decibels louder compared to the default out off setting. That's because it's at plus 10 clear bass on the clear bass dial. Now, at this point, the bones in your skull will be vibrating along with every beat, and it overwhelms the rest of the music such that without some kind of boosting in the mid range and high frequencies, the audio is gonna sound more dead in that area. So I actually prefer out 1 compared to Alt 2, which sounds too boomy and bloated for my liking. I mean, listen to the samples comparing between the different Alt modes. In my next video, I'll be comparing their sound quality to the XB910N and XM5 headphones. 
or you can take a shortcut and arrive at your own conclusions by comparing them yourself on loudandwireless.com slash soundsamples. I find it really interesting that each EQ preset in the Sony Headphones Connect app has a custom alt tuning, so it still maintains that same bass balance whether you're in vocal mode, mellow, or bass boost mode. Not sure why they even bothered to include a bass boost EQ preset. Now, for now, my biggest gripe with the Altware is the controls. I do prefer having all the controls on one ear cup, so it's more intuitive for me, although I do agree that left-handed folks may prefer to have the ANC toggles on the left ear cup. In terms of comfort, they're not uncomfortable per se, but it's got a stronger clamp than the XM series. So if you wear it for a few hours, you begin to feel the clamp a bit more, and the heat building up from the cushions, which, though very plush, yes, does seem to be a stiffer, denser type of cushion compared to that of the XM series. Overall, it's not bad for the price it's going for. It's a powerful noise canceller, almost at the level of the XM5 headphones, and its sound quality is very customizable. So even if you don't like too much bass, you can do what I do and set it to the treble boost EQ preset in the Sony Headphones Connect app, then lower the clear bass dial a couple of notches. But I wouldn't say it's extremely great value for money still, because you could also consider the WH-1000XM4, which is high res certified, has flagship performance, specs, and features, but at a much lower price than the XM5s, since they're often on promo. That is, if you don't mind that the XM4 headphones have already been out for four years. But if it's just about base performance for you, the outwear is a lot more capable in that regard. It's even more capable than the XB910N because it does offer more base related options that makes them far more versatile for base heads compared to the older XB910N. Just to give you a preview, the XB910N's default bass tuning is somewhere at the Alt Wear's Alt 1 setting. This comparison is going to be in my next video, in which I'm also going to compare the Alt Wear to the WH-1000XM5 headphones. So be sure to subscribe and tap the bell button to stay notified. Frequency response charts are on X, so do follow me there for more. And click here for my take about whether the XB 910 ants still worth buying compared to the XM5 and XM4 headphones.